Hi all my YouTube friends, um, yo, it's been quite a while, I haven't done one of these videos for quite a while but I decided to give it a go and I'll just tackle the questions one by one. Um, I think this from our side, yo, January and February has been such a busy time and I see that I haven't even done my December or my January questions yet so I think this is going to be quite a long video. I'm going to attempt to do both both months questions at the same time. So um, so if you if you did ask a question and, um, and it's been a bit later, maybe like towards February, then you must have stro maybe scroll forward a little bit further in the video, you'll definitely find your answer. I'm going to try and attempt to answer most of the questions that I can. I think some of this stuff is a bit, maybe a bit more technical, and I think for some of this stuff you might actually need to speak to your accountant. Like I said, all the advice that I give over here, um, I can just give you guys a little bit of guidance of what to do and how to do it. But please just go double check it because the legislation, obviously a lot of this stuff changes so quick that it's difficult to stay up to date with everything. <clears throat> Yeah, but thanks once again for watching. Thanks for watching my channel. I really appreciate all your support. And um, yeah, if you guys need an accountant, remember to reach out to us and see we, we, if we can help you. Um, let's go for it. Let's quickly see the videos that um, or the comments that I've had in the past two months. So the first one was from Kid Smart Quick. Thanks for the recommendation to school. And I think that was probably um, um, a, a thing that I did on the previous month's commentary. So yeah, so it's like you're glad you're enjoying it. The next one is from Min. So let's say our company got granted for paying before due. Try to put it under purchase discounts, but it does not look like the price is reduced. So I'm not sure exactly what you mean with this question because I see that you're looking at suppliers and supplier payments. But let me quickly see. Our company got, grant, got granted for paying before the due. So I assume that it's probably a discount that you're referring to. Okay, let me quickly have a look and see what will be the best way to do that. Yes, so what happens, I'm just jumping onto the demo company quickly. And if you had to go to your, your banking screen and you go to transactions and you go to banking, and as if, for instance, that this top one of here was a payment that you made to your supplier, as if, for instance, of 10,000 Rand or let's say 100,000 Rand, and you choose instead of account to choose supplier, then also here on the right hand side, there's a little fork where you can do the allocations on. And then on this one over here, you're going to say that this 100,000 Rand was for that. And then over there is the place where we would normally allocate the discounts, you see. So that is the one place where you can probably allocate the discounts. Um, um, so the other place where you could possibly do it as well is, let's say, for instance, you make a payment to to this Eastside Bicycle Suppliers and let's say, for instance, the amount that they're paying is 100,000 Rand, the outstanding invoice is 150,000 Rand. Then what you can do, you'll see that under transactions, there's a place of here to say, look, uh, supply adjustments. And then you could go into this screen of here and then reduce the balance on that specific um, customer. So let's say, for instance, um, this is the guy. And then you can see over here that you can say that you want to decrease. Obviously, you'll say whether there's VAT involved. And then over here, you'll find, try and find the account that says discounts and adjustments. We normally create an expense account. And then obviously over there you'll put the amount in over here to say that what the amount is that you want to um, put through as the discount. So that is, if you don't come right on the banking screen, then make the payment for your supplier. Then over here is the place where you would just do the, the balance of that allocation. Let's have a quick look at the next one. Okay, so just looking at the next question over here is from Sigrid. So this is a very helpful, and I think talking about business structures. Um, so thank you for the clear and understandable information. I would like to start a web design business where I can develop and design websites. Already have all the resources and software needed to begin with low startup expenses. I will work on small scale, only contracting projects that I can manage on my own. And considering the different structures, it seems the most aligns to a sole proprietorship. Do I need to register my company with a sole proprietor with a national database and when would you say to open up two bank accounts? Do you mean with two separate banks? I want to make, mm, want to make. I'm not doing anything dodgy while sorting out the details. So if you trade as a sole proprietor, there's a benefit of having a separate account that you use for your business account because if for some reason Sash wants to do a verification, then you can send them that bank statement with 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 all with only business related transactions in there. Otherwise, if you use your personal account, then you've got a mixture of all the different transactions inside which inside one account, which is not ideal because you want to try and keep the business stuff separate because then you can keep track of actually what's happening inside your business. So I would recommend that you go to a different bank, open up an account maybe with FNB or Standard Bank or APSA whoever, so you can keep all that business separate stuff 
the business stuff separate from your normal stuff. Um, yeah, so so in terms of um, the national database, I, it's not necessary to register there. Um, South Africa's got a thing. If you do work for government departments, then they've got like the central database where you have to register. But if you're sole proprietor, all that happens is on your tax return itself, there's just a different section that you have to complete where you're just going to put your, your, your income and your expenses that you earn from your from your business venture that you're going to add it to your tax return. Um, next one over there, Africa. Cool. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Ah, the tax number video. That was the last little one. Um, perpetual inventory. I think that's a little bit of a technical talk that we want to do. Obviously, the stuff or the, the aim of my videos is not to go in too much into the technical side of how accounting works, but more just to do um, basic tutorials on, on accounting systems and talks about the basics and stuff. So perpetual, I think the best thing is just to run a past your accountant and to see what he says on that. Because remember, you've got the two different inventory systems and um, perpetual, I think that's the way the SAGE also works. Mm, I'm not sure. Pink in South Africa. Let me just have a quick look over here. Yes, so the next one is about the e-finding representatives. Um, there's been a lot of chop and change in this field as well recently. Um, the guy says that the that, that other screen that Sash uses, um, that apparently the, some people told me that the new or the other system that they were talking about um, is working. Uh, so they reckon that you can probably get it done within a week or so. So I think if you go to online services and you use this function of here to say um, a register representative. So I've heard that the, this system apparently now takes about a week for them to do the activation. So maybe just give it a test here first and see if you can't come, come right there. But I know that they still do, do the appointments. Um, let's quickly see. The, I'm the tax practitioner is registering company on e for my client. Okay, when I'm making an appointment, should I take entity representative as yes? Mm, remember that if you do the verification on their behalf, then you need power of attorneys and all that stuff. We normally recommend our clients to do this verification process themselves, you know, because if they don't pay, you don't want SARS to be wanting you for money that they didn't pay. So now if you're going to go add yourself as the representative on their behalf, then you might pick up problems. I just, just out of personal choice, I encourage my clients to do this for themselves. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's what I would do. Let's quickly have a look over here. Um, deceased estates. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a thing. Madaka Bethlorian. So mm, I'll share the link over there. So if you go into this website over here, um, there's a lady that does all our UIF work for us. You'll see that if you had to open it up, her name is Tanya Bushma, that does most of our UIF stuff for us. So you can contact this lady and then she will sort out with all the UIF stuff. Um, let's quickly look next one. Yeah, I think um, business structures. I think it's cool. They obviously just touch on the very basics of it, but I don't think that they, they, they deal a lot with it on the practical side of how it practically works. And so I think that is possibly um, what is happening. Yeah, what you need to be, be, be aware of over there is just the practical things of how it practically works when it, when, when it comes to registering businesses. Um, yeah, pretty awesome that you just dedicate this video or videos to answer your subscribers' questions. Yeah, like I I really um, believe that I am adding some value to my clients out there. Let's quickly see tax returns 2021 home office expenses. Oh, look, RC Fernote, I'm really glad that you are enjoying my videos. Yeah, maybe reach out to me and then we can maybe connect a bit. I always love chatting to other accountants and stuff as well. And just to build up a bit of a network, you know, we always need each other's support out there. Um, Grace Demi, um, let's quickly have a look over here. Sage One Banking, um, yeah, that's always a lucky video. I think if you understand the basics about banking on Sage, remember that is basically the backbone of any accounting system. So if you've got your banking right, then 99% of your transactions is going to be accurate. So that's really important that you must understand the banking section of, of any video that's important. Now, let's quickly see, what's the difference between the CC and the PTY Limited? Remember, CCs, they stopped registering CCs a couple of years ago when the new companies act came out. So the only option that you've got now is to register PTY Limited. But they changed the, 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 the rules um, 
in terms of how the PTYs function. So the PTYs that you get these days is basically the same as what the old CCs was. There's not a really big difference between the two. So um, so I wouldn't... The, the PTYs in terms of... Uh, is actually something that carries a bit more weight because if you look at the Close Corporations Act, they... Um, it was always a draft bill that I think that they that they thought out in England where they first wanted to wanted to start implement close corporations, but they never got that far to actually start implementing it. So they took that piece of legislation and they implemented it in South Africa. So we're the only country in the world that actually worked with close corporations. So that has been one of the issues. And now, if you work with international clients and they hear that you're a close corporation, then these guys haven't got a clue what type of business structure that is. So that's why they converted it to rather make it PTY limited because then you are playing on a level playing field when it comes to international transactions. So if you contact a, a, an American company or a British company or it doesn't matter where you are and you tell them that you're PTY limited, then immediately everybody knows what type of business they're dealing with. We have us, I'm a close corporation. Then after people don't know what what the story is there with those business structures. So it's just interesting. Yeah, so CCS doesn't exist anymore. The existing ones continue indefinitely or you can just convert it over to PTY limited. Um, Jasper, hey, my good friend, I really love all your support and stuff. And if it wasn't for Jasper, I probably would have been doing these videos today. He's probably the guy that inspired me to keep on going and to do these videos. <clears throat> next week, next one, Busi, where are Rosie? My computers won't install vanilla payroll. It shows a dangerous site. Mm, we've had a couple of instances. I know that recently I did some updates on my vanilla payroll and my Norton antivirus actually gave me some warning. So by the time, so when I was installing my vanilla, I just had to switch off my, my, my Norton antivirus and then from there, um, from there, the programs and stuff in, installed. Or you can contact those guys. Their support is excellent. Um, I actually did a video now with, with the owner of Vanilla Payroll <clears throat> probably about two weeks ago, and I just loaded the video during the week. So um, so that's something to consider. Um, can't install, same thing. Um, get in touch with them. They'll definitely be able to assist you. Yeah, same person. <clears throat> Let's quickly see. Kolobi, Christine, I forgot my text number. So have a look at that. At the steps over there. Otherwise, if you can't come right that way, you're going to have to find the receiver of revenue. It's important that your contact details must be 100% right. Otherwise, you won't be able to use that functionality. Um, Beverly, I want to help my friend getting a tax ID in other to get taxes. If these the right steps to do it, can someone assist me? <clears throat> she does not have the money to pay someone to do that. So if you follow these steps, if everything is right, then these steps would work. If you don't come right following these steps, then you can have to find the receiver of revenue and then they will help you to get the tax number. Because quite often, if you can't find it this way, then it normally means that something is wrong. You know, that the, the, the registration details that they have on file is different to what we've got on file, you see. Um, so, how does tax work if you get paid from an overseas company? Do you work online in South Africa? Anari Kutzer. So, so um, what happens... Is, is if you work for an overseas company but you're based in South Africa, then the income that you're earning from that side is taxable in South Africa, so you're going to have to pay tax this side. So you've got three options, and I did discuss it in that one video um, of mine, uh, of the basics of income tax. Yes, it's the same video over there. So either, this depends as you earn 300,000 rand, and you don't submit anything throughout the year. Then once you submit your final return, Sasha's going to give you invoice, then you've got to pay that amount once off. Second option is to do provisional tax payments. In August and in February, you can make it payments throughout the year. Third option is to register for patients so we can pay tax on a monthly basis. So, so the fact that you're based in South Africa means that you're a South African tax resident and therefore that income will be, will be, um, will be taxable in South Africa. You can send me an email as well and then I can send you a nice template that you can use to, to complete because obviously with foreign income there's some, some currency conversions that you need to do as well. Um, quickly have a look over here. Um, mm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. The, uh, the hate has continued. I learned more. So we're talking about starting businesses. <coughs> also, man, could I ask for a video that could explain how forex trader would go about these taxes, business structures, bookkeeping, etc. would be undertaken? 
but there doesn't seem to be much disclosed on that information. Thank you once again. I think because it is such a technical field, I think you wouldn't find a lot of general knowledge out there because, you know, if you start trading in Forex and you start trading in shares and cryptocurrencies and stuff, the legislation changes the whole time. So people are very scared to put information out there because it's offenses, I tell you, you've got to deal with it in a certain way and you take me to word and you do it that way and Sash goes and changes the rules. Now I've given you the wrong advice and then I can be taken to book for that. So so the best would be to, to get involved with somebody that deals with cryptocurrencies or whatever the thing is that you want to deal with and then speak to those guys so they can guide in the right direction. The guys that we work with is guys from Tax Consulting SA. I did an interview with them recently where we talked about cryptocurrencies. So those are the right guys that you must maybe get in touch with because they can help you structure everything right. Um, another useful video is business structures that's really cool then team machine are really that enjoyed the video let's quickly see <clears throat> we have experience in all kind of accounting tax works how do we get clients from overseas um i think the, the the same principles that i discussed there should work overseas as well there's i mean google still stays google it doesn't matter which country you are i think google still has the, a lot of um no weight in terms of credibility so if you can get it right to be ranked on google and people find you there then the chances are that you're probably going to be able to pick up some clients there let's quickly see in this brown skin is this this tax is for a usa bank account yeah I'm so i'm not sure how the us tax system works if it's a if it's a us tax number you need then you're probably going to have to contact somebody that's not you help you with that tax number donkey and uh, the mango also man sage business cloud accounting quick review yeah i think sage is a lucky little program i really love it um informative video like the content crypto taxes yeah so that is the video that i'll talk about these guys are rock stars yo you have some if you ever get in trouble not in trouble but if you ever need somebody just to back you up and you're not sure about what to do and I see that you're also from an accounting firm, then reach out to these guys because they, as I said to another accountant the other day, they're not there to steal our clients, they're just there to assist us, you know, to work in the back end. I was at the offices the other day, and yo, there's probably like 150 people working there. It's a huge office that they've got, and these guys have got loads and loads of resources. And um, the nice thing is that you speak to the right person, they're going to give you the right advice. So I probably use them at least once or twice a month for stuff that we're not even sure about. And then the thing is, there's no man is an island, you, especially in the accounting field, things change so quickly that you have to have support from people around you, otherwise you're going to run into trouble. As quick you see, being betting field, I think we did touch base with you guys. Um, yeah, so I think we did have a quick chat and we were talking about the business, YouTubing, income and that type of stuff. So, like, I think we did Chat, so we, I think we're all good then. Um, let's quickly see Nadia Greiling. Can the owner of a company be registered as a, as a representative? Definitely. Yes, <coughs> where was I? Sorry, I just had to take a quick call over there. Um, can the owner of a company be registered the representative? Registered representative? Definitely. So the company, normally the owner of the company would be the representative because he is the person that's out for phone if you're not paying your taxes. So definitely, and as quickly, UIF, I tried, and the only, they gave me a case number, said that they'll get back to me in 20 days after that I never heard from them again. Hey, Sebastian. So these guys at the Department of Labor is giving us gray years. The only thing that you can do is just keep on trying. Um, otherwise, you maybe you need to go to a labor center itself and go chat to the guys there and see if they can't maybe apply. So another one on UIF. Um, UIF pays for how many months? Three or more? So it just depends on how long you've been working. I know that under normal circumstances you've been working for a long time, and sometimes you can get money from, from them for up to six months. So it's definitely worth it to try. Let's quickly see. Um, what if the supplier is not VAT registered and I didn't charge VAT? So Louisa, mm, so what would happen is, is I did a video where I talked a little bit on, on the fact of, of how it works. But let's say for instance you buy something from somebody and you pay him 115 rand and you are not registered for that. Then what it means that the 115 rand will be part of your costs. So on your cost of sales, the cost for you will be 115 rand if 
you are registered for VAT and you're buying something from a VAT registered supplier, then it means that your cost is only going to be 100 Rand. The 15 Rand you're allowed to claim back from the receiver of revenue in terms of input tax is what they call it. And then that 15 Rand you can deduct it from the VAT that you charge out to your clients again. So only the difference is what you're going to pay into the receiver of revenue. So, so you'll see that if you work on SAGE, you need to go tick the little box to say whether you're registered for VAT or not. So if you're not VAT registered, just tick the box to say that you're not registered as part of the basic setup period that I did discuss over there. Then you won't even have the option to say whether there's VAT or not VAT on the invoices that you get from your suppliers. Let's quickly see SAGE reviews. Um, <clears throat> the cash flow function, um, I know that that for cash flow, it's, it's always a bit of a tricky thing because remember that, that most of your your accounting systems works on accrual systems, which means that the day that you issue an invoice, that day the sales are declared on your accounting system and the day when you buy something from your supply, even if you haven't paid for it, that cost will show already, but it will show that you still need to pay that supplier. So I know that there's an add-on that you can add on to on to Sage, and I think you just need to Google it now. Something about Sage reporting, where they then give you that option to to, to convert it over to a cash basis, and then from there you can then have a look and see start working in the cash flow. But the cash flow is normally something that you would actually do manually. So you run your income statement, look at your budget for the next couple of years, well, the next couple of months, look at your debtors see how many of those debtors you think is going to pay within a certain amount of time and then look at your suppliers and see which of them you have to pay within a certain time but ta, ta, certain period of time and then the difference over there will show you whether you've got a positive or negative cash flow so because it's a bit of a complex calculation normally um the by default most accounting packages won't have a cash flow function um worked into it um so there's a little bit of a manual calculation but i know there is an add-on that can do that um, same person, uh, I would like to use the job function for small construction entities. Do you have a video on that, especially how to include budget per job, please? Um, so so the budgeting part is part of your setup. Um, so you'll see that, I'm just going to say quickly over here, you see there is a thing about analysis codes. So this is the place where you would we would set it up, and then over here you would, you would add in the analysis code. So what will happen from there is once you've got some of those codes, running over there and you go let's say for instance into your banking and you look at your bank transactions then on the right hand side there will be there will be an actual column over here where you can allocate it to say for which job or for which department or whatever you're working with and that is where you would do those allocations over there so it does have that functionality it's very limited but it does it definitely does definitely does have it so if you work with a lot of different jobs then it becomes a bit of a nightmare. But if you work with lazy princess big construction jobs and you only do one or two per year, then it's normally more than enough. Well, we've got some people who's got branches, we're like in Cape Town and Joburg and, and, and Durban, and then we use those analysis codes to run income statement per area, which works quite nice. Um, domestic workers. Uh, let's quickly see. System tells me that the information may not be correct per UIF. I'm not sure which information. Not allowed to submit the salary is below minimum wage. Yes, <clears throat> so I know that that's a little bit of a, a thing that you've got to be careful of. Maybe fund the Department of Labor and have a chat with them. Otherwise, you can maybe contact this lady over here that, um, that delves me out with most of my UIF queries and just run a past them and just see what she says as well. Um, so that was the UIF one. Let's quickly go a little bit further. <clears throat> um, thanks for the Sage tutorials. They've helped me a ton. How do you un unsplit the transaction so what will happen if you've got a, a, a split transaction in your banking eh? and um so let me maybe just take this one and i'll split this one up to say that we're paying one account and then over there was fifty thousand rand and then we've got a let's maybe just ask want to just choose any account and then we've got a second one over here <clears throat> for another fifty thousand rand let's say for instance that is our original transaction Come on, <coughs> remainder. Let me just take the vet off here quickly. Yeah, so let's say for instance, that is my original transaction. So if I want to unsplit that, I would go back to that button over there, and then from there we would delete one of the lines. <coughs> so we would take that one off, change this to 100,000 Rand, and then from there you would save, then you can see that the transaction is unsplit. So that is how you would do that. <coughs> um, uh, we will be... 
Okay, unsplit the transaction. So that is how we do that one. Um, uh, so how do you get to the e-booking service with short method? Okay, so what you need to do, I think I did talk about it on the video as well, but, but you would go to the search website itself and then... <coughs> let me just quickly get back to the home page of the app. <coughs> so, so you would go to book an appointment and this screen over here is the place where you would make the appointments. I wonder if that is maybe what you're referring to. Yeah, that is how I get to the booking system. As mens begin om goed te maak om te verkoop met die mense bezigheid te registreer, maak meestal stickers en kaartjies, maar koop en verkoop ook. Mm, so stroll, I think that, mm, I think that's the reason why I did that video, so you can make a bit more of an informed decision. I think maybe if you're just testing a concept, then I wouldn't just go register a company straight off the bat, because just to keep a company compliant, it's probably going to cost you 5,000 rand per year more or less, you know, where if you only sell 3,000 rand stuff of per year, then it's not really worth it. But if you start it as a side venture and you see that this thing is picking up as something that you want to pursue, then I would maybe recommend registering a company. Um, Nima Patel, I'm glad that you're enjoying the videos. It's really cool. As quick as see, Sage, Monthly Procedures, this channel um, is the best channel I've subscribed to. Thanks for explaining simple terms, how to follow the process. My business uses Sage and you explain things so simply. Nazreen Ibrahim, thanks man. Yo, I really appreciate comments like that. It just makes my day. Um, Ursula, thanks. Could you please send me the contact number for Tanya? We've been struggling with some issues and cannot get through online. Great to appreciate it. So once again, if you go to my website and you go to the retrenchment page, there's the details for Tanya over there. I must actually do a video with her sometimes so you guys can actually meet her as well. Um, let's quickly see over here. Um, uh, shall I again? Great videos. Oh, my December questions. That's cool. Income tax for companies, 95,000 rand. I must actually redo this video because obviously the tax tables changed a bit. So I must actually redo this one and just get it updated with the latest tax table so we can have the right um, ones. Um, Zara, great information. Awesome, man. Glad you enjoyed it. Tabiso, um, thank you much. Your videos are more concise, yet most informative and Easily comprehensible than the officers. Hey, it'll be really lucky if they can pay me. I think you must you must phone them, phone the call center, and tell them they must pay me. <laughs> My videos will be cool. Then I'll give you commission for it. Um. So if you're already submitted using part one, okay, can you do part two too? Since I have been given the case number when I submitted via part one and as to fast track my application. I don't think it will be faster, but if you do make the appointment by the second one, there is a place where you can actually, let's say for instance, they, they, they approve your the, the representative by the first route, then you can always go back and cancel the second one. So um, I think it's a great idea. Go both places and make both bookings and see which one works the fastest. Um, yeah, income tax 21... The income tax in South Africa is so high. Yeah, mm. Shemaine. Um, I always say to my clients that paying a lot of tax is not a problem. It's a good problem to have because then it means that they're making money. So that's cool. Thanks for the update. Budget speech. Yeah, I really enjoyed this video. And it's a quick summary. Vader Market. Yes, man. Lucky to chat to you. Nice. Thanks for watching. Yo, I see your channel is growing quick, quick. It's like 13,000 subscribers. That's really awesome. Michelle, I need to register as a representative of my company in order to activate taxes. Do I still do telephonic? So so the telephonic route definitely works. As I mentioned uh, just now, is that if you go to the search page, um, some people say that this that this route of EM, so if you go to online services and you go to there to say register representative, some people say now that that system takes about a week. The other thing that you can do is obviously just do it as I mentioned over there and make a booking with the receiver of revenue because then you've got a date and time. If they phone you, then it's quick. Like the next day, you've got access to everything. The problem is over here, they don't always give the people feedback so you don't know whether they've finished the process or not. And I think that is one of the issues that I've got over there. Let's have a quick look. <clears throat> Could you make a video on the amount dedicated to Department of Education? I don't think I'm going to do that because there's a lot of material out there at the moment of where they're spending the money. I, obviously, the aim of my video was just to have a look and see what, how much more is going to cost us. Antoinette Anderson. Um, 
Okay, the e finding representative. Oh my word, thank you for this. I had no idea this was a new process and spent all night trying to figure out why I could not register. Thank you, excellent service. Also, man, I'm really great that you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, this is a representative thing. I know that the guys from the institute that we belong to, Saipa and the guys at Saika and all these type of guys, they're engaging with the receiver of revenue on this process because now this process used to take us literally um, two minutes to do. Now that the same process takes us like two weeks to do, which is ridiculous because it means we can't do our work. And we've been having a lot of complaints about this, that stuff that's not working right on e-filing. How can I verify if my company is registered and pays you? Well, if, if you, Harold, if you go and register on the you finding website as an individual, there's a place on the left-hand side where you can go track the history of what they pick up on your ID number. So you can put in your ID number over there, and then you can see who's the employees who's registered you and the payments that they made for you. So I think that's going to be the easiest. Or you can always find the Department of Labor as well. They'll also be able to tell you. Maples. As quick as he's starting a business. <clears throat> Um, I'm a sole proprietor and I want to apply for car finance. What documents do I need to apply as I don't have a pay slip invoice my client monthly and they pay me after 30 days. So um, you're probably going to have to ask your accountant to write a letter for you to confirm your income. But normally if you work for yourself, then they want financial statements, statements of your assets and liabilities. So there's a lot of extra stuff that you need to submit through to the receiver of revenue. And Nuri. I've recorded all my transactions in the bank for some reason or other. My total don't balance to the bank statement. This is because I didn't import my statements into Reconcile. How do I check my, why I don't balance? I hope this question makes sense. Next question, can I, can I record the petty cash expense also in banking and the same as expenses? Yeah, so two questions quickly. So the best thing to do is if you're in Sage and you go to banking and you go to reports, and you go to this one over here that says bank and credit card transactions and over here you look at your at your bank account that you're working in then here you can on the right hand side you can trace the balance of your account so you can go check on the 1st of March was that by my bank balance then you go check on the 15th was that my bank balance because then over here you can see if anything is missing whether there's stuff not in the account or whether you've got extra stuff over here so that then answers the second question as well that if you work with cash stuff you go to your banking and then then over here, you choose your petty cash account and then this is the place where you would capture all your cash transactions. So if clients paid cash, you'll go over here to say the customer paid, you're going to put the amount in over there. If you got paid stuff, as a business, you would bought fuel, then over here you're going to choose the expense for fuel if it's there. And then over there you're going to put the amount for fuel. So that is where you're going to be doing all your cash transactions. Just don't do it in the main account because then it means that your bank is not going to balance. <coughs> And let's quickly see, how do I change my bank opening balance to zero to start off? I entered a closing balance in error. So let me quickly see, if you go to banking over here and you go to transactions, um, no special needs. Over here is the button where it says adjust bank and credit card opening balances. So this is the one place where you can go and adjust it. You see, so you're going to choose the bank account's name and then over there you're going to change the balance and you have to give a reason. The other place where you can go to, so if you go to company and you go to your opening balances this is the other place where you can go adjust your opening balances on your bank account mm, where's my bank account non current bank accounts so over here you can also go change the amount to say that it's 10,000 rand or zero and then once you've finished you update it but you have to try and make sure that this amount of year balances because if your trial balance is out to start off with then all your books and stuff is going to be out as well so just be really really careful if you adjust opening balances on your bank account. Um, let's quickly see. Um, when I added a customer, I entered an opening balance in error. How can I correct this here? Looking forward to your reply. So I do one-on-one -on -one classes. I charge an hourly rate for my lessons or if I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for Sage. So you can always send me a message, um, send me an email and then we can arrange and then we can have a chat about it. But once again, if you go to your customers, then you go to... Um, list of customers and then I think if I remember correctly let me quickly see if the, the, the opening balances is over here see there's your, your opening balances come on there's adjusting the opening balances here you would choose the customer and then over there you would choose it and once again on your on your 
uh, on your setup of your company file as well. So if you go to your opening balances over here, and then over here when you, when you add your trade receivables, this is the other place where you can go change the opening balances of that customers when you started working on Sage. So those are the two places. But just be really, really careful for that. Make double sure that you've got the right amounts in there. <clears throat> Um, next one over here, thank you. I think everyone is anxious of further increases in any form of tax and what the most viable route is, either investing or saving the little funds we have left in SA. I agree with you fully. We have to be wise. Next one, <clears throat> if you're sole proprietor, do you need to register your business with SASH? As I mentioned a bit earlier, that if you're sole proprietor, you would then just go on your tax return. There's a section that you need to complete where you would put the income and the expenses from your sole property in there. And then obviously the profit is just what you, what you will get taxed on. Um, oh, filing systems. Yeah. Mm, I was wondering when I was going to start getting comments on this. I really enjoyed doing this video. And I think it's something really practical for businesses out there um, to make sure that they've got their filing systems right. Because these days the receiver of revenue are starting to ask for documents. So you must make sure you've got it right. Customers and invoicing. Question please, how to stop paying invoices when my cash on hand account is go for negative balances? I'm sorry for my bad English moment. <clears throat> so just going back over here. So if you've got customers paying you, then it means um, if it's paid electronically, you would go to your banking over here. So, so as the transactions would get, get imported, if you've got your, your bank feed set up, then obviously the deposits will come in. And then over here, you're going to say customer. And then this is obviously the customer. And you choose the amount that they paid. If it is cash, you would go to your petty cash account. You would obviously choose, <clears throat> once again, over there, you're going to say customer. Choose the customer that paid. And then obviously the amount that they paid. So if I put in, let's say, 10,000 rand, say, so safe changes, now I can see my bank balance over there jumped up to 11,500 rand. If you start paying expenses out, and this amount goes negative, then it means that you're probably paying expenses out of your own personal account, you know, out of your own pocket instead of through the business. So then you might need to have put in an entry of year to say that, that you're borrowing the business, let's say, for instance, 10,000 rand, then out of the 10,000 rand, you're paying the business expenses because in theory, your petty cash balance should not be negative. I hope that answers your question. And I think those are all the questions that I've got so far um, that I had on my channel. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed my answers. If you've got further questions, pop me a, a WhatsApp. No, maybe make a comment in the video. Remember to um, keep on watching the videos, keep on hitting the like buttons, and if you find value, in the shade with your friends as well. Cool man, thanks for watching. We'll tattoo and bye bye.